In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a differential equation using Laplace transforms. So let's just jump into it and go through it. And as we go through it, I'll show you the formulas that you need. So the very first step you need to do is take the Laplace transform of both sides. So we'll start by taking the Laplace of y double prime plus 5y prime plus 4y. And that's equal to the Laplace. I love that L of zero. It's really beautiful. Okay, so the Laplace transform is linear. So what you can do now is take the Laplace of each individual piece. So this is the Laplace, whoops, fail, Laplace of y double prime plus five Laplace of y prime plus four Laplace of y. It's a lot of L's. And the Laplace of zero is zero. So this is equal to zero. Okay, so you can just jump into this step. This step is not really necessary. I just wrote it so you see what we're doing. So again, the step one, take the Laplace of both sides. The next step is to use the formulas. So there's a formula for this thing. Maybe I'll write the formulas over here, then I'll erase them. So the Laplace of y, we're going to call that pitchfork y of s. Okay, the Laplace of y prime, we're gonna, that's going to be equal to s pitchfork y of s minus y of 0. I call this pitchfork y of s. I think it's just psi, but it looks like one of those pitchforks, like the guy who lives in the ocean, um, he has one of those. So this is the Laplace of y double prime. So I just have this one memorized, but notice there's a pattern. This is the first derivative. This is the first power. This is the first derivative. This is the zeroth derivative. So it ends in one less derivative. So this is the second derivative. So it should start with an s squared pitchfork y of s. This is the second derivative. It should end in one less derivative. So this one's just going to be y of zero. And then this one is y prime because it has to end in one less derivative. That's how I memorize it. Is that the best way to memorize it? I have no idea. Um, it's painful. This is a tough formula to know. Uh, so again, these are the formulas that we're going to use. Again, this is the second derivative. So it starts with s squared and it ends in one less derivative. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and apply these formulas over here. So we have s squared pitchfork y of s. Uh, minus s y of zero, so minus s y of zero, and it ends in one less derivative, so minus y prime of zero. Okay, minus y prime, and then plus five, and then we have s pitchfork y of s, minus y of zero, and then plus four pitchfork y of s, and that's equal to zero. I, I have no idea how hard this problem is going to be, so uh, we, will, we will go slow. So again, these are the formulas you need. Do you need the one for the third derivative? No, it's usually, it usually doesn't come up that much. Um, I'll go ahead and write it for convenience. Let's see if we can figure it out. So y triple prime should be s cubed pitchfork y of s minus s squared, okay, minus s squared y of zero minus s y prime of zero minus y double prime of zero. See, see how I kind of, what's the word, extrapolated that from the previous? So it's the third derivative, starts at three, you see, and look, it ends at one less derivative. Second derivative, first derivative, zero derivative, no derivative. Second derivative ends at one less derivative. First derivative, zero derivative, no derivative. So that's the idea. Okay, so we're here now. So I'm going to erase this so we have some room. And let's go ahead and go to the next step. So again, step one, you take the Laplace transform of both sides. You use the fact that it's linear. Now when you're here, um, you just simply apply the formulas and we get here. Now we actually invoke our initial conditions. We can actually use them. We impose them on the DE. So, so y of zero is equal to one. So that's gonna be a minus s, let's do that. So s squared pitchfork y of s minus s. y prime of zero is zero, so this is going to vanish. I'll write it minus zero plus five s pitchfork y of s. So five s pitchfork y of s. Um, y of zero is one, so it'll be minus five. So minus five plus four pitchfork y of s, and that's equal to zero. 
be really careful in these problems. Always try to take your time. If you're able to take your time when you're doing these problems, you will, you will get them right. Um, the issue comes into play when there's like time constraints and it's really easy to mess up here. Uh, one little mistake here and the whole thing is off. Uh, let's see what we got. So I think we can factor out a pitchfork Y from here, here, and here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have pitchfork Y of S. So parentheses S squared plus 5S. So S squared plus 5S plus 4. Then you can add the S and add the 5 to the other side. So this will be S plus 5. Okay, good stuff. So again, we just basically pulled out the pitchfork Y that gave us S squared plus 5S plus 4. Let's go ahead. Oh, so what do you do now? You solve for pitchfork Y, right? So after you get here, you solve for pitchfork Y. That's the next step. So you solve for pitchfork Y. So let's divide by this. So we have pitchfork Y of S is equal to S plus 5 divided by all of this. This is going to factor. Let's go ahead and factor it. It's going to be S plus 1, S plus 4, if I did that right. Let's check. S times S is S squared. Boom, there it is. 1 times 4 is 4. Boom, there it is. The inside is S, the outside is 4S. Inside plus outside is the middle. So S plus 4S is 5S. It works out perfectly. So this is what we have. So what are we even doing? We're solving this DE. So you take the Laplace transform, you impose your formulas, you solve for pitchfork Y. Why? Well, here's why. Pitchfork Y is actually equal to the Laplace transform of y. That was the definition. So we have the Laplace of y is equal to this. The question is to solve the DE. So the question is to find y. So it's really beautiful because now we have the Laplace of y, it's equal to this. So to find y, we just take the inverse Laplace of this. So that's why we were doing so many inverse Laplace problems before, because now to solve this DE, we're basically gonna find the inverse Laplace of this expression. The Laplace takes y to this, so the inverse Laplace takes this back to y. Okay, I'm gonna erase all of this and write this again over here, because to do this, we're gonna use uh, the partial fractions method. So let's, let's erase, and then over here, I'm gonna rewrite what we have. We have pitchfork y of s equal to this. So we have pitchfork y of s equal to s plus five. So s plus five over, then we have s plus one, s plus four. So s plus one, s plus four, beautiful stuff. Okay, so now we're gonna use partial fractions. So whenever you have um, distinct linear factors like this, you can use the cover-up method. It's also called the Heaviside cover-up method, and I believe it's named after Oliver Heaviside, which was a physicist. This guy was a big time uh, smart person. So this is A over S plus one, because it's a linear factor, plus B over S plus four, because it's a linear factor. And we're gonna use what's called the cover-up method. If you don't like the cover-up method, you can just use regular partial fractions. You would multiply both sides by this, but it's worth getting good at cover-up because it's so useful, it's so powerful. So to find A, what you do with the cover-up method is you go over here and you cover up what's under A. So S plus one is here, so you cover it up over here. And there's the question, there's two ways you can ask the question. Question one is, what makes this undefined? Well, negative one. Or question two you can ask is, what makes the bottom zero? Negative one. They're the same thing. So whatever makes this zero, so negative one. So you just plug in negative ones here. So this will be negative one plus five. This is working out nicer than expected. Negative one plus four. I had not done this problem. I just, I had the problem written down. So I'm feeling like it's working out pretty nice. <laughs> so, uh, so four, I just don't wanna mess up. Four over three. So there we are. So again, we cover this up and we plug in whatever makes that zero. So negative one, good stuff. Yeah, looks okay. Let's find B. So to find B, you cover up what's under B. So you go over here and cover it up. And you say, okay, what makes that zero? So negative four. So it'll be negative four plus five, negative four plus one. Okay, so negative four plus five. And then over here we have negative four plus one. That's gonna be one over negative three. Let me check that. We covered this up and we plugged in negative fours. Yup, yep, it looks okay. It looks really good. So this is negative one third. So now we just take these, plug these back in and we finish. So A is four thirds. It goes up here, but you can put it in the front. That's what people do. So four thirds times one over S plus one. B is negative one third. It goes up top, but you can put it in the front. That's what people do. So this is negative one third, one over S plus four. Okay, beautiful. This is pitchfork Y. So Y is the inverse of plus of this. 
So y equals the inverse Laplace of all of this. The inverse Laplace transform is linear, so you can just take the inverse Laplace of each individual piece and pull out constants all day long. This is the inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 1 minus 1 third inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 4. Really powerful technique, uh, this, this method of solving DEs. So, so now um, you can think of this as s minus negative 1. The formula we're going to be using repeatedly here is if you have the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus a, that's equal to e to the at. So here it's s minus negative 1. This is going to give us an e to the negative t. So this will be 4 thirds e to the negative t minus 1 third. And then same thing here, except it'll be e to the negative 4t. And that's my friends is the final answer. We did it. We solved the differential equation using Laplace transforms. Honestly, I'll be honest, I thought this was going to be much, much harder, um, but it wasn't. So I am very happy about that. That's it. Take care.